Daniela, and welcome Hi. to Create. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. This is so exciting. I've been looking forward to this. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you. Me too. Finally, that we kind of <laughs> arranged a time and a day. Um, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you invited me and that you thought of me. Yes, absolutely. You look so beautiful. I love Thank your you so background much. and your top. You look beautiful. Thank you. I, I did a little bit of a, a backdrop here for you guys so you could see a little bit of the textures and colors that I usually work with. But um, I love it. <laughs> I'm actually going to let you introduce yourself and kind of let us know what media you work with. Yes, well, my name is Daniela Cristiana. I am a visual artist. I work with mixed media um, and I've been specializing uh, in painting and uh, fashion styling uh, for almost 13 years now. So I've kind of blended both worlds in, in my career, um, also working as a fashion stylist and as a painter, um, I found a way to kind of merge both worlds. Um, I also went to school for, for fashion styling and uh, visuals. So um, it just kind of happened throughout the years that I started blending my own styling with my own uh, creative process and just recreating uh, fashion and also making uh, visual art. So yeah, it's been a, a quite a progress. <laughs> That's yeah. absolutely amazing. You and I actually shared the beautiful opportunity to um, present and, um, and, and, and sell our, our clothing on a platform that's called Nintac, done by yes. Feli. And you have incredible stuff on there. Do you mind? Do you, I don't know if you have anything to show us, but you are just, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how you come out with all these. You do so <laughs> much work and one is well, more gorgeous than the yeah, other. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, um, it, it's crazy. Nitak uh, and Fernanda came into my life in a very um, magical way. It was very organic. Um, we met through a mutual friend, uh, but we actually met through Instagram. We never met through, through, uh, people or anything, uh, somehow a mutual friend of us connected us through Instagram and um, I started painting for her store. She really liked my style and I really loved her style. So we kind of gravitated towards uh, each other and um, it was just very simple and, and a very honest and organic uh, relationship that we just immediately hit it off and um, with Fernanda's ideas um, and I kind of blend in mine um, and she trusts uh, fully in my style so I, I'm really lucky to have that relationship and, and uh, the Nitak family. I, I just am so passionate about her, her message through her brand and, and I'm just so blessed to have found a community of women that have supported my, my craft. And you do, you paint uh, vegan leather jackets, is that correct? Yes, for, uh, for Fernanda, I paint vegan leather. Um, I usually focus, for my brand, I focus on vintage leather. Um, and it's always been a passion of mine. Um, I think that when you create something that you're just very passionate about and it's part of your lifestyle, like for me, painting clothes, uh, has always been in like my family and uh, something that my grandmother and my mother used to do a lot. So it is just kind of part of me. And I love the whole vintage process and finding cool things and finding, finding something unique to transform and make it my own and to just share it to the world and, and have people accept it uh, is an amazing feeling. So that's always been like my, my process. I paint on leather. Uh, on denim and other materials so it just kind of depends on what piece I fall in love with and then I just decide to transform. So where can people find your stuff? Right now I am in the very early stages of working um, on my website um, but uh, everybody can DM me through Instagram. A lot of my business comes from Instagram. I just have people that 
just send me a message or an email um, and they reach out to me and I like local people they usually just tell me you know um, can you find me a piece or um, I can send you one that you can transform so it just usually de depends on the case uh, mm -hmm. or the client um, but yeah they can just send me a DM and then I, I can work with them and you do any kind of clothing, right? You don't just do jackets. I have seen you do, I mean, all sorts of variety of clothing. Yes. Um, so I started on jackets um, and then I slowly started doing art on shoes and um, uh, what's it called? Skirts. I've always done like art on skirts, uh, shorts, everything, everything that you can think of. Um, right now, uh, I'm working on some other pieces that I've never have worked on before in my life that I don't want to share too much because it's a surprise. It's going to be amazing. Um, but yeah, I just really, even though I, you know, leather has always been my, my comfort zone and working with vintage, um, I always try to find something new and something different that I can offer the people that follow my art. And, um, but yeah, I usually just work with pieces that just, I just, um see a potential in yeah do you uh during this quarantine that we're facing right now this pandemic has this affected your timetable of how you are staying creative or has nothing changed in your in your day-to-day -day routine i think that um it has affected i mean it has affected the whole entire world and and in so many layers of 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 everything and uh humanity in in general and i think it's touched every industry and uh every human uh in a certain way and um it has affected me in, in a way that you know maybe certain events have been canceled that i mm -hmm. um you know that had aligned in, in the process uh, for these next couple of days or weeks um, everything has been postponed and or pushed back um, but you know you have to kind of work with that and work your way through every situation um, but yeah it, certain events have been postponed but I think that nowadays like in this time I feel like for an artist the biggest I feel like for any artist, you, you think, oh, being at home and creating is like the, the reward to all of this, right? But it's, it's a huge challenge to just find the inspiration and to be in that momentum of, of creating. And sometimes we beat ourselves up for not really creating every single day, um, especially during these times. But I think that we have to be very um i guess kind of just gentle with ourselves and graceful to ourselves because it's a very hard time so um i think in both ways you know events and business obviously but um a lot of uh my clients have been reaching out i've been working on some custom pieces that i have pending um so just trying to stay positive and pushing pushing through <laughs> I love that. I love that you say that because I think you're right. I think we're all sort of um, forced. We're all so trained to keep producing at all times that even right now we're like, okay, I'm in quarantine, but I still got to make something and I still got to produce something. And it brings you kind of almost like in this frenzy where you're like, I don't know. I can't go out. I don't know where to start. I feel overwhelmed. I feel also very uncertain because we don't really know how it's going to look like even once things really do reopen. So I love right. that you said that we do have to go very gentle and we do have to sort of like find our own equilibrium in this, in this, which is very individual. It's very different because obviously yeah. it doesn't affect everybody the same. Yeah, it's very different for everyone. And I think that you just have to take it day by day, um, especially, you know, us artists, I feel like we tend to get very motivated and uh, we find inspiration in just going to a coffee shop or I don't know, a local museum or going to buy your materials and your, your brushes or 
everything kind of stimulates stimulates your mind to create more and you go and visit the local businesses that support your your business as well too where you find all of your material or people that you know or that you network with and all of that is some sort of fuel for your creativity but i think that that's the challenge there like right now we're we're supposed to stay home <laughs> and then just find um just find that creativity as time you know progresses but also um just being gentle with yourself and, and it's okay to just have a day where you're not doing anything whatsoever as long as you're taking care of yourself and following guidelines of of the precautions that we need to we need to take as a community and as you know as citizens of this country we have to take care of others as well so it's it's um it's a difficult time to find that balance but but it's it's doable we can do it <laughs> are you being creative at this time or are you a little bit in the freaked out moment or are you just like you said kind of like day by day <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you asked me this but um I don't, i've had days where it's been very challenging um, I'm not gonna lie, there's days where I start sketching an idea and I really hate it and <laughs> I drink two cups of coffee and then I go back to it and then um, I'm thinking about, you know, what's gonna be the process for, you know, uh, the next pieces that I make for the website and um, just trying to learn other skills online as well too that I can apply to my craft. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to be constructing and making in ev every single day. Even if you read a book that applies to a discipline that you apply to your craft, it's something. It's, it's um, you, we have to, you know, see it as like, okay, this is something that I'm doing for myself. This is something that I'm doing for my art. Um, and it's okay to have those moments of like, okay, I'll go back to this, but right now I just need to breathe and then I'll come back to it. So I have those moments. Um, I have mo days where they're very productive. Um, and then I have days where they're, where they're not. It's, <laughs> so it's just kind of like finding the balance. Um, you were saying earlier that you have somewhat of a surprise new series. Was, is, has this been birthed out of this quarantine or is this something that you've been wanting to do for a while? Um, I mean, I think that it's a combination of, of both. Um, I think during this time, I've definitely have had um, the, you know, the luxury of just like sitting on, you know, the ideas that I have uh, processing them and seeing how I'm going to execute them and what the process is going to be like, how it's going to look like. Um, so it's, it's a combination of, of both. I think that also being at home for, you know, such a long time, it could really, um, play with your mind a little bit. <laughs> um, but it also can bring you a lot of, of new ideas and the creativeness like that comes that's going to come from this and is coming from this is going to be amazing. So um, I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have um, a certain way uh, that helps you to stay positive or do you, do you still have extreme ups and downs where you're like, I don't know what to do right now? I, I feel I'm a very emotional being a person um i i tend to be like one of those people that if i love i love really hard and if i'm sad i am sad completely there's like no in between for me um dedicated yeah yeah and um it can be you know maybe i can freak some people out if I'm very sad and maybe they think that's something so wrong, but that's how I handle my emotions and that's how I process things. And for me, like, for example, you know, I, especially during this time, it's been very difficult because I tend to find inspiration from just going somewhere and finding the colors that I'm going to use for my next pieces. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I think that my creative process is very, I want to say it's very emotional. 
it's very emotional. I find a lot of inspiration from music. Music is always like my number one fuel mm -hmm. um, from fashion as well too. Um, but fashion that I just see in, in my head and that I wish existed and mm -hmm. kind of, you know, manipulate things in a certain way and create them um, to fit kind of like my aesthetic because I feel like if you create um, something that you wish to wear, is something that you know is going to connect with someone else and somebody will connect with your piece um you don't necessarily have to create things that are current or modern or you just have to create something that's so you yeah. that you're just going to immediately gravitate people that are are you know that love your work so mm -hmm. I, it's a combination of a lot of things yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that. And I've said that before, but it, we, we are living in a time where we're really not constrained to a certain era of dressing. So you can really just yeah. kind of like identify the way you want. And I feel like the more authentic you really produce your art, the more you find your kind of like group of people that, that are attracted to that individual that like very specific and unique you that only you can do right like i see the things that you have in the back and i, I i'm looking at them and i'm just kind of like so in awe like the guitar is actually is that can you use it does it play or is it purely for display um I, yeah you can use it I it's mean, so beautiful. Are they buttons or what yeah i went a little button crazy recently oh and um but yeah you can you can play on it uh, I used it for a, a photo shoot recently, um, and yeah, I mean, I transform things uh, just to kind of like, I don't know, I, I feel like I create in a way that, like I was telling a friend, I'm like, I think I, I create things that I just wish existed, you know, I, I sometimes find myself like very challenged, and I, even when I'm creating, I'm just like, why isn't this working why isn't this paint not staying on this and i'm just like okay step back and then i go yeah. back to it again yeah. um but yeah i just i really try to create from a very genuine place in my heart mm -hmm. even though it might be strange or weird to someone i see it in a certain way in my mind and the you know the beauty of of you know of art is that you it just it it's a blend of, of music and fashion and everything is combined. So, um, and that's why I like to create an environment for my art too, visually. I, I love to stage, you know, my work and to style the women that I envision. And um, it's like a whole, a whole world for me. So um, I take it, I, I don't take it like seriously, but it is, it is my, my world. It is my life. Um, and it's it's something that I it's very passionate for me. So, um, I love but yeah, <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Daniela. This is incredible. And we also wanted to encourage people that feel like um, they have been encouraged by somebody who creates authentic art or somebody that uh, probably made something that they feel like might encourage somebody else. We encourage them to use the hashtags create hope or creating hope that that way we can kind of keep the keep the momentum going of kind of like inspiring each other even though we're all in solidarity hopefully we can create some sort of unity even though we're all you know kind of stuck all by, by ourselves yeah i think that you know uh, especially for artists we are essential too everybody is essential in a way you know the person that serves your coffee at your favorite mm -hmm. coffee shop um uh, art is essential. Artists are essential as well, too. We, you know, we motivate other people to create as well, too. Um, and, you know, it's a time where even though we're home, we just have to remain very strong in, you know, in, in our craft, in ourselves as well, too. That stillness is a move still, you know, stillness is a move and we have to see it as a, an investment to really view ourselves within so we can come out of the stronger. And um, I really want to just encourage artists to just be and, you know, um, to stay strong and to stay motivated, um, to not fall for, you know, the things that we see on social media, you know, that kind of, you know, put us in a, a situation where we think that, you know, 
having a large following is is cool or you know having a bunch of likes or you know um it's your your message should always be very genuine and authentic and um to always remain there to always remain in that genuine energy and you know the stars will align <laughs> eventually i love that i love that that i think that's such an essential point that a lot of people um can can sometimes misunderstand uh, this whole social acceptance, this whole like sort of uh, this, you know, this era that we live in that we depend on uh, social media and what people think on a larger scale, even though, it, you know, it's, 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 it's a fan base that you don't even right. know or not. Right. And I for think, me, sorry, go on. Uh, for me, I think that um, in the past, I, because I've been painting for a very long time since I was little, but um, I started pursuing my art art professionally um uh, you know i want to say probably like six years ago um started selling probably four years ago um and before my art was very geared towards music it still is um and but i would collage all of my favorite artists and um and it, also, I did a lot of custom work for, for clients here in San Diego, and um, I painted all of their, their pets and, and did a lot of custom work and everything. But I, I first started with, um, with music, and I, I felt in a way that, like, even, for example, if somebody liked my work um, and just believed in it and everything, I, I would get so excited and so passionate about it that I would send them free stuff and and um and my art because it was like from a very genuine place in my heart that i'm like oh my god this person loves my work like i'll just send them this piece because they said that they loved it and um not really looking for any instant gratification or 15 minutes of fame um but um, it can be tricky. Those situations can get tricky. And I think that at the end of the day, um, you know, you have to really stick to the people that um, really believe in your work in a very genuine place. Uh, I feel like we fall sometimes for, for images that we see. And, um, you know, as long as you're creating from a very uh, true place in your heart, I think that you're always going to be a successful artist, whether you sell prints and that's your business model, or if you sell one of a kind custom pieces to your clients or, you know, it, it all depends on how you work. But um, I think at the end of the day, you have to really look into yourself and see, okay, this is my message. This is my imagery. This is my aesthetic. Um, but I just want to remain very true to that. I don't want to capitalize on somebody's following or somebody's fame. Um, you have to really evaluate what it is that you want to transmit with your work. And I'm very fortunate that like in the past year, uh, for me, it was a, a year of transformation. I, you know, a lot of things left my life and, uh, you know, but it was also uh, uh, a stage of like purifying what mm -hmm. I really wanted to create, and um, and it's coming out in my work, and I and I feel it, and and it makes me really happy to to be in a, a happy state with my with my art and my craft. Uh, when I look at a piece of work, I know exactly which one is yours. I think you have such a, a clear voice that comes through. And I'm glad that you said that, that you went through a very transformational time, because I think a lot of times uh, when we go through such times, which are usually not easy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a lot of snot bubbles for artists. <laughs> it's yeah. not, it's exactly. not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. yeah. But but I, the reward, like the, the co coming out of it is like so clear. Like it's yeah. almost like an artist is born, you know, like coming out of this sort of like probably these somewhat dark experiences. But like when you really like remove all those layers, you can come out and shine much brighter than you were before you walked into those situations. Yeah. 
exactly yeah. you're always uh, uh, you know evolving in a way and growing and almost leaving pieces that are not part of you anymore and it's so interesting how as humans we we and as beings we just change and we grow and we are part of our own evolution and um you know we go through our ups and downs but i think that the lowest of lows can just really shoot you for the you know the highest of highs and i am a huge believer of that and i i have lived it <laughs> and um you know, it, and it's it's part of the process. You know, the art business is is difficult, um, but it all depends on on what you think the idea of success is. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have a different definition. For some people, it might be having one thousand dollars in the bank. For some, it might be one million. Um, for some people, it might be, you know, 30 likes on Instagram. And for some people, it might be, you know, 1,000 likes on Instagram. Um, but for me, it was always, you know, am I happy with what I'm making? And as long as I'm happy with what I'm making and transmitting to the world and to whoever is around me, that's all that matters to me. Because at the end of the day, you know, when people see that, that's when, you know, when the real uh uh what's it called reward reward comes back mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah. yeah yeah you're such a you're such a light like you're such a beautiful like radiant light and i Thank see that you. in all of your work i really do like your jackets are amazing i mean every single and i see like even the way you uh you 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 decide to shoot a picture which i know from because of fernanda told me that you really yeah. like kind of like stage your own stuff it's just so incredible i mean i'm just, just so in awe of everything that you do thank you you know I, um i since i was a kid i was always very surrounded by by art and creativity you know my grandmother loved fashion she loved photography i still have her old canon right here with me and as a you know as a souvenir for me um but yeah she was a passionate for photography my mother painted all of my clothes when i was little mm -hmm. and for all of like my ballet classes and um and i grew up with men with my dad and my, my grandfather that were very creative they were very visual men that would build stuff from like my grandfather would build stuff from like coconut shells and like constructed things with uh, palm trees and my father he you know has always been in the food industry um but he would also build all of his visual art for his business so it was a blend of all of them uh into one <laughs> so um and i and it was a lot of color my father always used a lot of color um and music there was always music around um so i feel like i'm a combination of of all of them all of my upbringing and i was blessed enough to you know grow up between san felipe which is like the small um the town in in baja but um a lot of my years were in la uh, so i i my heart is in los angeles you know even though i miss you know i i live here in san diego but i miss los angeles a lot because i i miss um that energy that i had when i was growing up but um i i'm still very close so i can always drive up there <laughs> um but you know i was blessed to to have that experience to live there as well yeah that's amazing. So you come from a very creative genetic pool. I do. I do. All of uh, there was a lot of creativity um, at home. I, I always remember, you know, my, my mother, you know, always painted my shoes. Yeah, took me to dance classes until I was like 17. Um, and my father always played Bob Marley and the Bee Gees and, you know, was always cooking and sketching um, ideas and props for his restaurant. And my grandfather, he would always construct things at his um, campground and restaurant as well, too. And my grandmother, she was the one that introduced me to, to fashion when I was very, very young, she was always a passionate for magazines and photography. Um, so it was a combination of, of, of them and, and um, I guess 
me growing up here in the States, even though I was born here, I was raised there and just have a blend of, of city and small town. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. You can definitely tell by your style that you are a very vibrant human being and that you have lived in kind of like these warm countries and cities where, you know, where a lot is moving and there's a lot of fire and passion and sun. I like, I mean, I can see that in all your stuff. So I love Thank that. you. Yeah, I, I love dressing up. And, and um, so when you told me, yeah, we'll, we'll do the Zoom meeting today, I'm like, cool, this is a good <laughs> excuse for me to dress up and put on my red, lips, my, my red lipstick. Um, but yeah, I, I love, you know, dressing up and, and fashion and, um, you know, changing my style. There's days where I'm a little bit more rocker or, you know, a little bit more bohemian or I don't know, it just depends on my on my mood. But um, I, I have a, a huge passion for it. I love that. Thank you so much, Daniela. Really, I so appreciate you taking the time and putting on your, your red lipstick and getting <laughs> fun here and inspiring us to let us know what Thank you've been you. up to. And please keep us posted. I'm so glad and honored that I get to know you and that you make the world a little brighter because we definitely need it at this very time. So thank you for being here and for being such a radiant light. Thank you. No, thank you so much for, for inviting me and for thinking about me and uh, to share my story. And, you know, I hope to motivate others. And um, I hope that, you know, this motivates other artists as well, too. And, um, you know, to stay strong during this time. Yes. And if they need any cool, fun clothes, they have to look at your Instagram and, and, and grab it while it lasts. Yes, yes. Follow my Instagram. It's Daniela Cristiana, uh, Daniela X Cristiana. You can always DM me or send me an email. Um, you can also buy, you know, my one of a kind pieces for Nitak with Fernanda. Um, and yeah, you can find me on Instagram. <laughs> Visit <Yay>. me there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Daniela. Have a beautiful evening. I appreciate Thank you. you. I love Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, Thank you. Annie. Virtual Bye. Bye. I know, virtual hug. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> yeah.